Living in the White House is a pretty sweet situation. You have gorgeous meals made for you by the White House kitchen staff. You're given a $100,000 redecorating budget, and you have a team of dozens of people ready to cater to your every need. However, there are also some caveats to living in the White House. You aren't allowed to open windows, change certain rooms, go where you want without approval, or even own an iPhone without it having intense security settings that liken it to a child's phone. That all being said, leaving the White House can be a pretty jarring experience. When presidents and their families head back to normal life, they're given seven months of transition funding, 10 years of Secret Service protection, and 30 months of private staff with a salary not exceeding $150,000. So they're not exactly tossed out into the cold, but there is a lot of adjusting that needs to happen. But the big question is, where do they go? We'll see just how much these spaces cost where they are, and why exactly the former presidents chose to live there. Barack Obama Obama was president from 2009 to 2017, and he was very vocal about his living plans after his presidency. Though many expected him to return to Chicago, Obama instead decided to stay in D.C. to allow his youngest daughter, Sasha, to finish her schooling. Rather than purchasing a property outright, even though he definitely could afford it, Michelle and Barack decided to lease a home in the upscale neighborhood of Calorama. And by home, I mean mansion. The 8,200 square foot home mansion has nine bedrooms, eight and a half bathrooms, and is worth $6.2 million. Given that Washington, D.C. contains some of the most expensive homes in the world, that price does make a bit of sense. And though the exterior of the home has a charming vintage cottage appeal, the inside is the polar opposite, a minimalist modern design. The kitchen features white, gray, and black accents, which are also found throughout the rest of the home. There are state-of-the-art appliances, and with no more White House kitchen staff serving up meals, I have a feeling they get some use. There is also an area in the kitchen reserved for storing books or drinks, if that's more your style. If it were me, I'd probably put, well, both. Beyond the living room, there are several sitting areas. The window panels tie the exterior of the house to the interior with their vintage design, while also sporting the sleek lines and minimalist colors that are found in the interior of the home. The main living room is subtle and cozy, with a big fireplace for wintry nights, and yes, more gray and white. The dining room sports a weathered wood ceiling, which contrasts the white walls and dark wood floor original to the home. There's also a chandelier that is sure to turn heads. The bathroom has perhaps the most ambitious choice of all, a busy black and white wallpaper with a black white and gray tile floor. It's a bit hard to imagine the former president doing his business here, but I suppose I probably shouldn't be trying to imagine that anyway. There's an upstairs living room that's perfect for curling up and watching movies, and a room that can be used for morning workouts and morning reads. The master bedroom has vintage windows and sleek, minimalist feels. Off the bedroom, however, you'll find a rather loud walk-in closet. Outside, there's a large courtyard and backyard with plenty of room to lounge, relax, and soak up the sun. George W. Bush George W. Bush was president from 2001 to 2009, where he received some of the highest and, well, lowest approval ratings out of any president in history. Through it all, Bush wasn't subtle about his country roots, so it made sense that upon leaving office, he headed back to his home state of Texas. Known as Prairie Chapel Ranch, his ranch home 25 miles west of Waco was actually a staple during his presidency. Visitors included Vladimir Putin, Saudi King Abdullah, Angela Merkel, Tony Blair, Spanish King Juan Carlos, and Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon, as well as several other prominent world leaders. After his presidency, George retired to the ranch to recuperate and relax, and it's easy to see why. Set on 1,600 acres, the ranch has a 40-mile network of bike and horse riding trails. The property has three miles of front along a river, as well as a 22-acre man-made pond that President Bush had filled with fish. At over 17 feet deep, the pond is a great place to head out on the skippy and wet a line. There's also a large grove on the property as well. The four-bedroom, 4,000-square-foot 4, home on the property was made to have easy access and views outside, with floor-to-ceiling windows and doors that lead outside in almost every room. A 10-foot porch encircles the house, with a tin roof that allows 
Bush and his family to enjoy the porch even when it rains. In addition to the main home, there is also a guest house and a garage southwest of the main house on the property. The complex also includes a helicopter hangar, which is not exactly common in your average ranch. Bill Clinton Bill Clinton was president from 1993 to 2001, with a bit of trouble in between those years. He lived in government-provided housing for nearly 18 years by the time he stepped out of the Oval Office, meaning the transition back to normal life was pretty dramatic for him. Luckily, he had some pretty nice digs to look forward to. At 15 Old House Lane in Chapel, New York, the Clintons bought a 5,232-square-foot home for $1.7 million, though it's estimated to be worth a lot more today. The 11-room colonial sits on 1.1 acres and is surrounded by a large white fence with a small gatehouse. There is a lush front yard that encompasses the classic New England-style home. In the backyard, there's a detached red shed and garage as well. The Clintons are very private about their home, so the last time the public saw it, it had quite a bit of 90s flair. And although I had a great time in the 90s, I can do without it in my house. The home has a nice dining room and a cozy study with a large library. The house is decorated with items from his presidency and his travels around the world, including items from Africa, Asia, and the Pacific Islands. Of course, one house isn't enough when you have the money from two political careers. Bill also purchased a home in Washington, D.C., in an area known as Embassy Row back in 2000 when Hillary ran for senator. The Georgian-style home is 5,500 square feet on a tree-lined lot that is a little over a third of an acre. Inside, you'll find seven bedrooms and five baths, with several living spaces to choose from. However, the outside may be the most incredible part of the home. The backyard has a large pool and sun lounging area surrounded by flowers and trees, providing privacy and seclusion. Upon purchasing the home, the Clintons added a solarium so they can unwind and relax in the sun. The home features curved doorways and bright colors, which really contrasts their mansion in New York. There's a formal dining room with bold walls and furniture, a family room with a large bookshelf, and a room that's used for informal meetings. So, there you have it, the homes of former presidents. What do you guys think? Which president is living the most lavish? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury, pip pip to doodly do.